This is a continuation of the teaching on Christ with particular focus to the gospel according to St. John chapter 1. In the first two teachings in this series, we did a general overview looking at the number of times the preponderance of the references to Christ in the in chapter one of the gospel according to Saint John. And we saw that virtually every sentence of the fifty one verses in that book contains one, two, three or more references to Christ underlying the importance of the person the importance of the person of Christ from this you get that Christianity is about the person of Christ about Christ is about the person himself following that we did a little talk on the eternity of Christ. We simply looked at the book of John chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, basically. We tells us that Christ had been before the beginning and that the word, which was another name for Christ, was actually God. That is what we have in verse 1 and verse 2 of the book of John. Today we'll be looking basically on verse 3. The gospel according to St. John chapter 1 verse 3. We, much of our attention will be on verse 3. So as uh, I advised in the earlier one, it's advisable that you open your Bible so that you will not be fed with my own ideas. You will be fed with the word of God itself, with what can be found in the Bible. And as I said earlier, it's always important that you, you yourself should pray that you will not only read, you will understand what you read will, ha will make meaning to you. The Lord Jesus Christ in one of his parables spoke what is generally known as the parable of the sower. In the parable he said the seed was God's word. The seed was the word of God. But one of the first things he said about the seed was about the birds of the air eating up the seed eating up whatever seed the sower sowed therefore for that purpose it's important that each of us must recognize that there are birds in the air that eat the seed that eat the word of God sown in the heart of people that is the reason why you must pray this is not uh something we are doing for fun this is a life and death issue and there are beings spirit spirit beings that will make sure you do not understand even if you hear what i'm saying it does not mix with understanding your mind lord jesus i pray lord that everyone that will come by this teaching you have mercy on him or her and you open their eyes to yourself and you give them understanding so that they will know you and they will have life to the glory and honor of your holy name in jesus name i pray amen john chapter 1 verse 3 all things were made by him and without him 
was not anything made that was made all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made most of us we read this verse of the bible and somehow somehow it, it appears to escape uh most of us all things were made by the word whose name is jesus christ whose other name is jesus christ all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made those are categorical statements those are, those are very specific categorical statements all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made those attributes those characteristics of christ are some of the things that we must emphasize forever if possible so that we know exactly who we are dealing with who we are talking about all things were made by christ and without christ was not anything made that was made all things including me the speaker including you the, the hearer including the sun including the moon including the universe including all the things that can be seen or unseen all things were made by him and without him nothing made that was made nothing in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god and the word was god and in verse 3 we now have all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made all the birds all the oceans all the planets all the stars the moons the systems all of them were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made that is the person we are talking about that is the person i'm asking you to receive into your life and that is the person that you must listen to because that was the person that actually made you so we will read a few more verses because the bible god has done something in the bible some of these truths he made sure he scatters them he scatters many of, some of these truths the same thing repeating them in various ways so as to build emphasis so that we might know exactly what god means all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made in first 10 of john chapter 1 first first 10 just go down a little you see you get to first 10 and you see the same thing he was in the world this same person was in the world physically now and the word was made by him the word was made by him he was in the world and the word was made by him let's check colossians colossians chapter 1 colossians chapter 1 let's check verse 16 verse 16 and 17 it's a it's a re-emphasis this re-emphasizes the same truth christ that we are talking about 
who walked on two feet, who was hung on the tree. In the earlier talk, we have shown, according to the Bible, that he was God. He was not just mere man, he was God. The Bible is re-emphasizing that fact by telling us what actually he has done in the past. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 16, we read, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. All things were created by him and for him. All things, including you, you exist not only by him. Your existence is not only by him, but for him. That is one of the sad things that we hear now in the in these occult places that call themselves churches nowadays. You get the impression that you were created for you. That God exists for you. It's not that you exist for God, but that God exists for you. That's from Satan. It's for, it's for the purposes of taking your eyes away from reality, from who you really are. So that you begin to see the mist. You take the mist for the real thing. Human beings were mist. We are mist. They are evaporating things. We remove our eyes. The devil has set off people. The devil set up people calling themselves pastors. And their main duty is to remove your eyes from looking at the creator so that you start to look at yourself. You, some of the time you hear them uh, uh, pay attention only to yourself. Look inward. You are not to look inward. You are to look outward to your maker. You are to look outward to the maker, to your maker. Because all things were created for him. For him. Not only by him. For him. Verse 17 of Colossians chapter 1 says, And he is before all things. And by him all things consist. He is the one that is holding everything together. Christ. God the Son. The Word of God. God the word is the one that is holding everything together. When we read in the Bible that God created the word by his word, the Bible is now telling us that the word by which God created the word is a person. And that person was the same person that appeared in Israel some 2,000 years ago and the one that shed his blood to pay for the sin of the world. We, everything was created by him and for, and for him. That is Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 and 17. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9, let us check it up. Ephesians, the book of the letter to Ephesus, chapter 3, verse 9. The same thing was repeated. And I read. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. God created all things. God created all things by Jesus Christ. The book of Hebrews chapter 1 has a repetition basically in some other way, if we read 
if you read Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, we'll pay attention more to verse 2. The book of Hebrews chapter 1. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past in, unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he had appointed here of all things, by whom also he made the words, by whom also he made the words. God made the words. God the Father made the words by God the Son. God the Father made the word by God the Son. And if we read verse 3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself poured our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. The Lord Jesus Christ is and was the express image, the express image of God. The Bible in the book of John, I think John chapter 3 or so, that popular verse, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. Let me read. For God so loved the world that he sent, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God so loved you that he gave his son. That the son should stand in your place when it comes to sin so that he might transfer to you his own righteousness so that he might transfer to you his own righteousness so that you might face god in the right way that any creature can face god and that is with God's own righteousness, with the righteousness of the Son of God, with the holiness of the Son of God. Not your own holiness, not your own righteousness, not your own goodness. Because the Bible says you have none of those things. Let me repeat. So that you might face God with the righteousness, the holiness, the sanctification, the salvation of the Son of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What we are looking at here, maybe we should just take a little Go to Revelation chapter 4. Uh, I want us to read Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. Just to emphasize some of these things that we have just said before. This was this is a song that they redeemed in heaven. This is part of a song that they redeemed in heaven were singing to God. To the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things. And for thy pleasure they are. God has created all things. And all things exist for his pleasure. You do exist. For his pleasure. His majesty shows forth 
in what he has created both feasible and unfeasible things that we can see and things that we cannot see for thou has created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created all things exist for the glory the majesty the, ple the pleasure of god the pleasure of the lord jesus christ in psalm 33 verse 6 let us check what the bible says it, it contains psalm 33 verse 6 contains this very important set of phrases psalm 33 verse 6 by the word of the law were the heavens made by the word of the lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth you can connect this particular passage to john chapter 1 verse 1 and 3 you can connect psalm 33 verse 6 to john chapter 1 verses 1 and 3 by the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath, by the breath of his mouth. The God of the universe created the world by his word. But the Bible later now tells us that the word of God is actually a person, is actually a member of the Trinity. And was the person given birth to by Mary without the intervention of any man. Christ, the Son of God Himself. This is a very short talk, but the importance we cannot overemphasize the importance. Of knowing, we, you can't emphasize the, uh, overemphasize the importance of knowing the person of Christ, so that you know if your, if the Christ, if the Jesus that your pastor talks about is not his creator, if your pastor addresses. A Jesus in his sermons in his prayers or in his declarations or decrees and you know that nobody talks to their father like that talk less of to their creator it should become very clear to you that your pastor does not know Christ. He doesn't know who he's talking to. If your pastor issues decrees, declarations, orders, that he expects God to fulfill, you should know your pastor is talking to a demon. Since to start with, he will not even allow his son or his daughter to issue the Christ to him. If therefore you hear any human being issuing the Christ supposedly to God or to any heavenly being, you should know those are Satanists, those are not Christians. Those are not children of God. Those are the people that the Lord Jesus Christ des described as wolves. They are wolves putting on sheep's clothing so that they might eat the sheep. Anyone, therefore, you find anywhere supposedly teaching anything about God and the person does not take Christ to be his maker 
He does not worship Christ. He only decrees and orders and, and, and issues orders to him. You should know the person is not a Christian. He's not a follower of Christ. He's not a follower of Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ made this very clear in the book of Matthew chapter 24. Before he left, he made it very clear to his disciples that fake pastors wolves will come. They will take over the churches which is what has happened in your own day. But they are not from him. In Matthew 24, verse 4 and verse 5, Jesus answered his disciples and said, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. I will read verse 11 and verse 24 before I make any further comments. In verse 11 he said, And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. In verse 24 he said, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. In Nigeria and in many parts of the world today, we have these Christs. Yes. Oh, yes. Not many of us know the meaning of the word Christ. Christ means the anointed one. Christ, that's the meaning of the word, the anointed one. Very many people come out today and they say that they are anointed ministers. What they are calling themselves, without you knowing, is that they are calling themselves Christ. When you listen next to what comes out of their mouth, you will discover that it does not give any glory to God, any glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, they believe they are in position to order God, to give instruction to, to God, to give declarations. They make declarations. Those are Christ. And those are the people, the Pentecostals, the Charismatics, that the Lord Jesus Christ warned his people about. For there shall arise false Christ. They are all false. They give false prophecies, false declarations, false beliefs about their power. And about, about what they can do. In Nigeria today, I, I, I suppose we, we, are, we are not going to have anything less than possibly 100,000 Christ. But Jesus called them all first Christ. Lord Jesus, I pray, dear Lord, that whoever has listened to this and check your words, Lord, have mercy on them and cause them to be your children. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord. Amen.